So today I am in a rush once again as always and I am off to Colchester to a special event that I've been invited to. But first, I'm installing a Hypervolt EV charger at my mate's house here. What we have here is the cable there prepared. And you may have noticed there that I haven't used an EV Ultra cable. That's because I've been carrying out extensive electrical work at this property where there's a massive extension that's been built. I'll give you a quick tour now. It's still well underway, but I didn't need the EV Ultra cable because I've just ran a twin and earth internally, so that's fine. So what we have by starting this kitchen, this is getting renovated and ripped out, so it's a bit of a mess, so ignore that. But what we've got, I've had to install here a triple stack consumer unit. This is the fuse box one, I absolutely love these. We've got loads of circuits, nothing's labelled up yet because I've still got more work to do, including rewiring this room. But we'll take a quick look through into the extension at the minute. We've got the chippy here, he doesn't want to be on YouTube, so we're going to put him on now. <laughs> and this is... And this is uh, Sam Hard, this is like one of my best mates ever. This is his job that we're on today. How you doing? He's got a massive YouTube channel. Richard phones me and says, I have something that might suit you. And he is taking the plunge, going to the dark side, from being a massive petrol head to an EV lover. I got given an EV car in Park Exchange and my lovely lady fell in love with it. So I got a bit fed up of getting on my scooter, putting it in the boot, riding it to the local EV station, plugging it in, riding back and, and where I live, I mean, you could die. So as Sam mentioned, he does live in like the roughest area in the world. In the so he's got like a million security cameras up, but I won't show you where it is because I'll probably get shot. Yeah, if you search for his other videos, he's already disclosed my location. If that <laughs> bothered, you can find me. So I call this the Harry Potter charger because when Harry Potter was brought into my world, he had a big scar on his head. And as soon as I saw this one, I was like, we are now pals. This is the wizard machine. We're going to call it the wizard machine, all right? Refer to the Hypervolt as the Harry Potter from now on, which I'm sure you guys are going to love. So anyway, the stage where we're at is I've got the cable ran to the consumer unit. That's all prepared there, ready for testing. So as you know, I'm in a bit of a rush today. So we're going to get the charger mounted, get the testing done, get the commissioning, run through all the setup with Sam, plug his car in. He secretly loves electric cars, but he won't admit it. And I'll put a link to his channel and all his social medias in the comments below. What, one thing I will say is because I built this house from scratch, obviously this bit up here was the original house, but this part here is the new house. So when I said to Adam, I've taken an electric car on, I actually no, I spoke to you about this before I had an electric car. And Adam was like, do you know what? It puts value on your house. I was like, brilliant, that's handy. Number two, if you do it now, you don't have to have any cables outside your house. So Adam, when we were building the house, has run, basically rewired my whole house. But he's put the cable all the way through. But this one will look quite pretty because it's internally run, right? I don't know if you can tell, I'm very excited. Right, so I need to get on with this job. This is a bit of a building site at the minute. So if you see other tradesmen in the background, just ignore them. And if you see Sam randomly interrupt this video, don't be surprised, we've got massive personality differences where I'm quite quiet, like doing things on my own. And Sam has a huge personality. He's very out there. So if he jumps in, just take it with a pinch of salt, enjoy it. Great at making content. His YouTube channel is huge. And he's done work with like Richard Fallings and Gas Monkey Ga Garage, if you've seen that. So anyway, check it out, it's really, really good. What I've got here is a six mil twin nerve cable and a Cat5 cable ready to go. And we're gonna go back entry into the Hypervolt. If you can hear that bandsaw, I'm sorry about that. And we'll talk about the event that I'm invited to later on as well. So Colchester is about a three hour drive for me, so I want to get this cracked out and get booked into my hotel. The event's tomorrow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some filming there if I can. Uh, if I'm not allowed to do filming there, I'm going to do some secret filming. So a bit about the Hypervolt, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, it comes in a white, a black and a space grey. Today we're going for the space grey because it matches all his new doors, his sign and all the other bits. And it's my personal favourite. If I was going for Hypervolt, it would definitely be the space grey. So inside the box you get like a quick start guide, template, which I never use, a space grey cover. Make sure you put this somewhere safe because I've dropped one of these in the past and it scratched it and they cost like about a million pounds to replace and you just lose all the money on the job. So just put this straight away in the front of the van on the seat. And there's a few tricks I'll show you with this charger because I've seen other people struggle with them. So this is like the guts of the unit and this one has a five meter tethered lead. We weren't really sure what size cable to go with on this one. But what you can do with the Hypervolt charger is that if you find that the cable's not long enough or you get more cars and you don't want to keep switching them around, you can change the cable from a five meter cable to a seven and a half or a 10. So it's quite universal in that respect, it's really good. You get a little box here and inside here, you get the holster for the type two plug and you get your CT clamp in here, which is essential for the dynamic load management. So make sure you install that. And that's what the Cat 5's for. So with the older Hypervolt, it used to be a bottom entry charger only. 
but now you have the option to go back entry, which we'll do today. But something that you must remember is that with these chargers, it comes with a 25 mil stuffing gland in the bottom, ready for the bottom entry. And on the back there, you can see there's the, the knockout for the back entry. So if you use the back entry, you need to blank this off and I'll show you what I'm gonna use for that in just a second. So first little tip for you is on the older Hypervolts, this was an absolute nightmare to remove, but now they've improved the design massively. And what you've got here is two clips here and all you need to do is release those and the front cover will pop off. So we just pop them off and there we go. Job done, put this in the van as well. You've got to look after the charger, make sure you don't scratch it. I've put chargers on just this before, it scratches them. Does it? Well, they're so like... Obviously the group in front looks up. Like... So the first thing I'm gonna do before I completely forget is remove the stuffing gland. And what I'm gonna put in is a 25 mil blank in the bottom there. And what that's gonna do is just maintain that ingress protection. And you can reuse the lock ring of the stuffing gland. And it's nice and discreet, so when it charges on the wall, you won't see it either. Ugh. And then I'm gonna drill a 25 mil hole in the back. And I'm using these hole saws here. And if I don't know if you've seen these before, but they've got little springs in them. And the idea of that is plastic or a metal, whatever that you drill, it's supposed to just pop out on the spring. It doesn't work. It works like the first time. And then after that, you just gotta do the old school stick a screwdriver in and get them out. But there you go, it was a nice idea, but it doesn't work. And just to show you, there is the bit of plastic stuck in there. I'll tell a lie, it's fallen out. It's actually worked. I take that back. And then get another 25 mil stuffing gland. We'll use the other one that you took off the charger. And then put it in almost inside out, inside the charger. So you put this bit on the inside. That way you can still put the charger against the wall flat. And with the Hypervolt, it's really space conscious that's the right thing to say. So when you put the front cover on, there's still plenty of room to terminate your cable, even if you're using an SWA or a EV Ultra. So again, well done Hypervolt, good design. I'll get the lock ring on and then just make sure you nip it up. The other good thing with this location is there's a great big soffit and a little bit of a shelter above this charger. So if for any reason there was any sort of water coming down, there's a bit of shelter there to protect the charger. So I'm gonna just nip this up. So now what I'm gonna do is put the charger on the wall, mark all the holes we're on for my fixings and get it fixed. This isn't gonna take me too long at all, hopefully. So once you've drilled your holes, just stick the two screws in the top. And then what you can do is hang the hypervolt, get the cable in place and then fix it from the bottom. And the other thing I like to do, which I nearly forgot, is just put some sealant around the cable entry hole, which just helps maintain that IP rating before you hang the charger. And then you can fix the bottom of the charger to the wall. And then once you've got it nice and level, just nip out the top screws. And there we go, ready for termination and testing. So all I'm gonna do now is strip back my twin and earth, my cat five. And then I'm at a point ready for getting on with some dead testing and then my live testing. And then we get it fired up. Inside the consumer unit, I've got this protected on a double pole fuse box type A RCBO. And then what you have with the twin and earth is you have the blue and the brown or the line and the neutral. They are stranded cables. So I'll ferro those up and the earthing conductor is a solid core. So we won't be putting a ferrule on that. I need to calm down a bit, I feel like I'm under pressure. That's because I've got a long drive, I really hate driving. So while I'm stripping this, I'll just tell you a little bit about Sam Hard. I've known Sam for about, uh, probably about 20 years now. He's like in that handful of mates that you can absolutely rely on no matter what. If there's any problem, any time of the day, even if it was Christmas day, if I had a problem, I know Sam would be there. Because of that, he is probably the only person that would carry out all this additional electrical work for. And we have literally re well, it's, it's basically a new build. The only rooms that are left is like an upstairs bedroom, toilet and the old kitchen which is getting ripped out so that's getting rewired so it's basically all brand new and it looks fantastic what i'm going to do again on this is just put a little bit of heat shrink on it just so i can keep the cat 5 nice and tidy i'm using the makita heat gun today and there's a little curb attachment here really good for applying heat shrink i'm going to use the right cutters today just a pair of snips cut the bit i need slide it over hello hello sexy banana 
and then shrink it down. Pretty all the time, isn't it? Plasterist has turned up. He wants to be on YouTube, so we'll tag him in a minute, and I'll put a link to his new new YouTube channel that he is starting, and it's all about this incredible motorbike that he's building. I've probably said that wrong, but you're going to love it. So with that curve attachment, if you can see, it just makes sure I don't have to move the gun around too much. Get one. Heat gun. They're great. Is it a proper Makita one? Yeah. So you can see that's the heat shrunk, heat shrink, and then put it down lovely. Tip of the day, don't try and take this attachment off after you just used it, because you're going to burn your hand off. Inside this box, you have your CT clamp, which I'll show you how to connect up at the other end in just a minute. But also you get this little bag in here and that little green connector, and that's what you connect the Cat5 up to in this and plug it into the bag of the charger, which I'll show you now. So with this connector, all this does is just plug in there. Ruining Adam's video, sorry. So the CT clamp there is installed on this side of the Henley block. And uh, now we're ready for testing. So I'll get that done quickly and then I'll come back to you with the commissioning side of things and we'll run through that together. So I've got my dead testing done and that is super important when you're doing a job like this because it's a brand new install. And you've got to make sure you mega those cables because I've had boarders in after me, I've had kitchen fitters in after me and you need to make sure that that cable hasn't become damaged and no one's screwed for any cables. Fortunately, we're all good, so I'm just doing a live test, um, doing my ZS on this circuit, then I'll get it connected up, and then we'll test through the unit and see what result we get. So we've got 0 0.41, that's absolutely acceptable, I'm more than happy with that. And then what I do is I just do my RCD test on this as well, because I just want to make sure that my RCBO operates in time. Before I connect it all up, we've got 28.2, that's fine, and I've got three more tests to do, but I won't bother filming that. So I need to terminate my cable now into the charger. And what you get is with this quick start guide, with the hypervolt, there's a bit of an installer's guide as well. And it specifies that the cable terminations must be done up to two newton meters, which is what I'm gonna do now. It's really important to follow the manufacturer's instructions because it just maintains that warranty that you're gonna be issuing your client with. So I just need to adjust this my torque screwdriver and two newton meters is tighter than some of the other chargers and it's surprisingly tight but what you get inside the hypervolt is these connectors they're absolutely mustard they're really really good with the anderson they put cheap old connector blocks in there which i really really don't like at all no i mean it's a torquey screwdriver oh is it yeah that's what, what? torque wrench and screwdriver yeah so i've got to torque these up to two newton meters to maintain your warranty sound and make sure your product is installed correctly you're amazing I don't know if it was told you so. as you know i'm very fussy about these things the beep it's quite great clicks it's all happening adam it's all happening mate i'm gonna go get cleaned up quick ready right, for work sam's gonna have a shower i'm gonna get my ass clean my bottom clean for all you politically correct professional people, sorry. Yeah, excuse his language. I do apologise. I'm a good boy, really. You can find out on my channel at hardupgarage.com. <laughs> right, so we've got that talked up. I'm going to put the front cover on now. What you also have in here is a little doll, and that is for the dynamic load management. And you can set this, um, and it varies on what your main cutout fuse is and the maximum demand that you've worked out on the property. So. Need to sort that out. This is all set up. So I'm at a stage now, I can stick that cover on. And what you have is a little connector here. I'll try and show you. And you have another cable here. And this just plugs into this. And then you hook the bottom on first. And then it just clicks. Oh clips in like that and you can see even with that 25 mil stuffing gland there's still plenty of room in here to work so great and the next it's time to put the front cover on and that just slots on like that and then you have this little bag of screws and obviously the little security screws because they don't want to make it easy with Phillips so I just need to find the right bit for that and then there's two screws either side that you need to just nip up and I've still got the wrong bit try again when you're putting the cover on you need to just push against it a bit to find the screw holes and then I put all four in before I nip them up. Blaster's having a nightmare. I should help him really but I'm not going to. Perfect. 
So now what I like to do is call that cable round and mount that holster and get that in position first before I carry out my commissioning. Then I can just put away all my kit really, apart from the little skeleton kit. And then we are done. Okay, so I've got the holster mounted, chargers all set up, but I need to carry out my testing now through my EV adapter. Now what you have with these chargers is something called a random delay. And what that means is when you plug your car in, there'll be a random delay between one second and 10 minutes, I believe it is. That interferes with my testing. So what I've done is I have connected the Hypervolt to my phone, which means I can override that, which means I can get my testing done. I can tell it's connected because on the charger here, we have a solid blue light around it. That means it's successfully connected to the internet. So I'll get all these tests done quickly. And then we'll talk about yeah. what the Hypervolt can do and the app. Right, so what we have on this app, if I try and show you here, is if you go into settings and then you go into your Hypervolt, you have the random start there. We're gonna turn that off. That means I can get my testing done. And what I do is I just use my iPad on Notability and take photos of all my test results. And I have a record of everything. And now I'll get on with the RCD testing. But that is the charger all tested and commissioned. The final thing that I like to do is just unroll the cable and then give it a wipe down and wipe down the unit. Just make sure everything's nice and clean. Just those finishing touches make all the difference. So wipe down the cable as you wind it up. Give the holster a bit of a wipe, it's all nice and clean. Plug it in, make sure. And I've got it on party mode at the minute, which I'll show you now. If you can see the neons. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is just run through the app with Sam, make sure he knows how to use it all properly. And then we are off to Colchester. So I'm here with Mike from EO, and he's gonna tell you what we're up to today. Hey, I'm Mike from EO, and today we're doing the Genius 2 Installer Training Day. So we're gonna take all the installers through everything to do with the EO Genius 2, from the product as a whole to install. So yeah, really looking forward to it. Yeah, you okay, mate? I'll redo it in a minute then. So that training event was absolutely brilliant and it was great to meet the guys from EO and Replenish again. We've met before and they're brilliant. I highly recommend attending any sort of training programs like that if you're looking at getting into EV charging or if you are into EV charging because it gives you an opportunity to get hands-on experience with the chargers, with the guys who work within the company and you can get all those questions answered that you may have. You also receive updates on what's coming in the future. It's absolutely invaluable. You also get to meet some other really nice EV charging installers. Like I met this guy from Colchester EV, really nice guy. Turns out he watches my videos on TikTok, so small world. So with the new EO Mini 3, there's a few things that I really like about it. One, I think the design has been massively improved from the Mini 2. It's a much, much nicer looking charger. It also comes with a built-in pen fault protection, got the ability for dynamic load management, and you can integrate it with solar, so that's really good now. The app's been improved, so that's really good, and the technical team are absolutely fantastic. So it's definitely a charger that I'm gonna be installing in the future for sure. If you wanna see me install one of these and give a full product review on it, I haven't installed one before, so it would be a back to basics raw installation video where I'm gonna show you all the problems that I come across, if any, and how to get around them. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna plow on now with my journey home. Thanks for watching, as always, and I'll catch you on the next one.